Hi guys, welcome back to UK Fly Fisher. Today you join us in a brand new venue. We're at Wollaston and Chepstone, and I'm joined today by Lloyd Williamson. Hi guys. Right, so as you said, we're at a brand new lake and you've told me to bring no flies. What's up with that? <laughs> well, I've told you to bring no flies, Lloyd, because today we're going to be introducing a brand new pack and that's our January pack. We've got six killer patterns in there and we're going to hopefully give them some tips and tricks about winter fishing with them. Oh, excellent. There we are, black mamba proving it's worth again. Double figure fish there easily. Okay, so I've just been given the January pack. Straight off the bat, I think this is gonna work really well today. We've got a uh, black mamba stalker so with a tungsten B to get down really deep. We've got a Suedo Montana, which is like a black fly with a yellow yellow eyes. And that'll be really well for in like the sort of margins where the fish are sort of hiding up against the reeds. That'll sort of drag them out. We've got the Scruffy Pulsefire Cat. I know that will work. If the black's not working, then go to white. That's, <laughs> that's always the way we go. We've got a uh, Chartreuse Hothead Damsel, and that always works well this time of year. Uh, and then we've got a couple of small flies then. So we've got a branding worm and a salmon egg. And I think those will work really well. If this ripple tends to pick up later, we might stick it under a bung. I know that's not everyone's go-to, but it does work for me. Okay guys, so we've seen the flies. Let's have a little look at our setups. The first rod I've gone for is my eight foot four weight. That's for stalking. I put the black mamba stalker on there uh, with a six foot leader. And that's just if I see a fish, I'm gonna have a cast for it. And then I've got the bigger rod, that's my Enigma, that's a 10 foot 7 weight. I've got a 12 foot leader on there and I've got that Suedo Montana to start with because I think that's going to be deadly. Okay, so same for me, I've got my uh, Airflow Delta Classic 7 8 weight rod with a floating line, I can't remember the name of it. Um, and I'm going to start with the, um, the Chateau's Hothead Damsel because I think that could work as well. With the bigger flies and the fish feeding at the moment, I think we should, uh, I think we should get on with them pretty quickly. Yeah, so we've been here about 20 minutes. Um, I've got on the, the, the Chateau's Hothead Damsel. I said I thought that might work well because I've got my floating line, i got about an eight foot leader and we've been seeing them rising. So I thought they're gonna be close to the surface. Let's go in again. They're gonna be close to the surface. So uh, I've been doing a slow retrieve. I've had two takes on it. And with that one, I let it sit for a about five to ten seconds and he just he just nailed it on the way in then let's see if we can get him in fish number one took the uh, chartreuse hothead damsel so one of my favorite flies in the pack has got to be the chartreuse hothead damsel it's been one of my favorite flies for a couple of years now. Where every time we go to a different place, it just works well. You know, I had my first fish on it this morning. Um, and it just, it's just a good all round winter fly. Right guys, so as you can see, they're all rising behind us, but I think the angle I'm going at isn't quite right. So a top tip would be if that you could see fish rising, you're not catching them, change the angle, cover the same fish, often you get a take. So let's go over to the other side to see if that works for us. Ready to move. Into the net. 
So as you can see there, just nipped to that Montana. Cracking fighting fish. I'm very impressed with the quality already. Let's get him back and hook him there. And just slide him back in the water. What a great start to the day. The two flies on this pack that I recommend the most for winter fishing are definitely the Suedo Montana and the Black Mamba Stalker. Black and green is an essential winter color. It always catches fish. We had that first fish on that black and green uh, Suedo Montana this morning and a black mamba stalker has done incredibly well for us throughout the year in fact and it's great for stalking fish. So these two are flies I will not be without when I go winter fishing. For the stalker, usually I'll have it on a smaller rod. I'll go around and find the fish, see their reaction, uh, gauge their depth, put it in front of them, see if they want it. Usually they will, they'll attack it out of um, a predatory reaction rather than out of hunger. They do not like this fly and that's why I always have one in my fly box. Now the Suedo Montana is a newer creation, it's just uh, an updated version really of a Montana fly which is always successful in the winter so we've added that in there but of course we've added our own little twist to it because we want to give the fly something different they haven't seen before and that usually works for us. So these two flies are basically our bread and butter of winter fishing and I wouldn't be without them. Okay guys so there's a lot of fish rising behind me but it is a catch and release venue so I've got a feeling they're shy. So one tip for the winter would be to make sure you approach the water slowly from a far distance and try not to get too close because you're going to spook fish. Let's give it a try, see if we can catch one or two fish. Well that was frustrating, first cast, straight away we had a fish. We had a bite and then he took and then I snapped him off because I struck too, uh, with too much aggression basically. Uh, so I just need to tone it down a little bit. Unfortunately I only had one of them flies but I've just been in Lloyd's box, don't tell him, but we've stolen one of his flies. So we're gonna get that straight back on. So after missing that first fish, I continued to use the uh, Scruffy Pulse Fire Cat because I had a lot of confidence in this fly and you can see it didn't take long before I was into a fish again. Now unfortunately that one came off as well and it can be quite frustrating but there were a lot of fish cruising in this area including one very nice fish and it's very important when you hit a fish in an area to have a couple more casts in the same area because they usually hang around as a group or as a pod. Now the slow figure eight here, uh, I speed it up every now and again was the uh, technique I was going for and you can see here it didn't take long before the line locked up and I was into a fish again. Now could we keep this one on? That was the question. Feels bigger, fighting a bit bigger, down and deep. Hopefully we'll get him in for you so we can have a Ooh, nice look at him. Nice fish, nice fish. <gasps> oh my god! <laughs> that's a cracker guys, absolute cracker. Scruffy post fire cat, that's three fish now. Hopefully we'll finally land one on it, but it looks like a nicer fish. That is really nice, That is. I think that's about five, six pound there. Oh, he's going for a swim. We're gonna have to follow him up the bank, guys. He doesn't want to have any of it. Come on, get him off! Oh, you want to eat it? Into it? Yes! yes. <laughs> oh wow! Awesome. That is a nice. That you know when I when you come over and I was like, there's a big fish by here. Yeah. That was him. That's a cracking fish on that scruffy post fight cat. That's a good five, five and a half pound, maybe even six. Uh, I'm not going to weigh him, I'm just going to get him back. So after the joys of landing that big fish, I decided to have a little move down the bank, back to where I was fishing this morning. Now there's still plenty of fish in that area, there's a pod cruising around, and a scruffy post fire cat had filled me with confidence. I'd missed three, and I'd landed one, and what a fish it was. So I cast back out, started to retrieve again, and it didn't take long before we were into a fish.
Look at that guys, quality fish, big paddle on him, cracking fight in rainbow. I do love winter fishing, they fight so hard, let's get him back. So, after landing them two fish and missing a few others, Lloyd clicked on to the fact that the fish definitely wanted that pulse fire cap and put one on himself. It didn't take him long either to start hitting into the fish. With his second cast into the pod, he hooked up into a really nice rainbow. Okay, so I've been through a couple of different flies this morning. I've tried the, um, the Shatru's Pothead Damsel and I had one on that. And I've tried the, uh, the Apps Bloodworm as well, um, but nothing's been interested in that. Gareth just had three lovely fish on the, uh, the scruffy, <sighs> scruffy, is it Cat's Whisker? Pulse Fire Cat. Scruffy Pulse Fire Cat. So uh, decided to chuck that on and that was my second cast out into the swim and we have the fish on. Get this hook out and get him back. Good thing about uh, barbless hooks is they just slide straight out and get back in the water quicker. Awesome. Yeah, that told you went straight for it, eh? not very often you get spooled by a stocked fish. This is, uh, this is brilliant, this is. <laughs> that is a nice bow. Oh, what a monster. <laughs> what a fish. What a fish. <laughs> Absolute monster. PB by far, I think. He's probably around eight pounds. I mean, that smashes my PB out, the, out of the park. Like, incredible fish, incredible fights. Can't wait to get back out there now. <laughs> Excellent, let's get him back. <laughs> incredible, absolutely incredible. Another fly that I'd highly recommend for the winter is our Pulsefire Scruffy Cat. Now the Pulsefire range has done extremely well since I created it, both in the blobs and the lures. They both seem to catch fish, and in winter time they seem to excel. You saw it today, we had the first three fish of the morning on this fly, including that big fish of about six pound. So I was really happy with that. You saw Lloyd then went on to it after seeing we were catching well, and he also caught a PB of about eight pound, and that was a stunning fish, really fat thing, beautiful tail on it. So some tips for fishing it. I'd usually fish it on a floater or a sink tip line with a 10 foot leader. Now the retrieve you could vary, speed it up, slow it down, but make sure you incorporate a pause, because often just after the pause is when the fish will take but that's the uh, Scruffy Pulse Fire Cat, and I highly recommend giving them a go. So, we're having a great day, so I thought I'd take a couple minutes now just to give you some quick tips and tricks for fishing in winter. So number one is a quick and easy tip. You're gonna to wanna to put away your nymphs, your dry flies, all your sort of patterns like that. Uh, they will catch fish, obviously. You can catch fish on any fly all year round if you really want to, and you're honing your skills. But to increase your chances of catching a lot of fish in a shorter period, you want to be fishing lures. Now, black mambas, damsels, uh, any sort of sonker, snakes, worms, uh, blobs, eggs, all that sort of stuff, 
all the stuff that's maybe a bit scary, maybe a bit too brush for some of you out there, they'll catch really well between sort of December and March. They'll catch all year, obviously. As we mentioned before, you can catch on any fly you want. But if you want to increase your chances of catching fish in winter, I highly recommend using lures. Now your retrieve, always vary your retrieve to find out what they want in a day. Sometimes in the winter they want it static. A bung will be your best choice. Maybe an egg fly, maybe two flies under, maybe a couple of buzzers even. Uh, under a bung will work well. But m more times than not, when you go out in the winter, you're gonna be able to add movement into your fly and catch plenty of fish. Now varying the retrieve is very important, but one of the most important bit is to always incorporate a pause into your retrieve. Not enough people do this. They're stuck on the same robot, robotic retrieve over and over, just doing the same thing, for same thing, same thing, never pause. When you pause, it lets your fly drop back through the layers like a natural fly would, and then come up again. It also makes it stop where it is as it's falling, and then suddenly it goes forwards, and that sudden movement can often get a trout to take. So there's a couple of quick tips for you for winter fishing. Hopefully they'll help you catch a few more fish. So after giving you them tips, we decided it was time for breakfast. Now after breakfast, I came out with a change of flies. I went for that egg fly on the dropper and that Apps bloodworm on the point. We went back to the hot spot, but I noticed there were fish rising further down the bank. So I started to cast and walk towards them with a diagonal approach and noticed that there was a gold trout. So I landed my flies just in front of the trout and it wasn't long before he jumped on the fly. Now, we were in for a bit of a treat here because not only did the gold trout take the point fly, but I also, while fighting the gold trout, had a Spartic come and take the egg fly. I had a goldie and the Spartic at the same time, but the gold came up. Spartic still on our egg. Unbelievable, guys. Little switch there. Put the egg on the dropper. The apps worm, which is deadly, on the point. The gold trout took the point, the Spartic took the dropper, the gold's come off but we've still got the Spartic on which is lovely to see. <sighs> Cheers boy. Yeah, that's it. Oh, I can't believe the gold came off. First time I got the gold to go for anything. <sighs> Not the biggest fish in the world guys. Well off he goes to fight another day. The uh, worm and the egg there proven deadly. That was pretty much third pass there. I went for the diagonal approach because I feel like when we're getting in front of them, they're a bit spooked. The water's gin clear here. They can see us with ease. So a bit of a selfie approach. Cast across him. I'm pretty sure the gold trout took first because that's the first thing I saw. And then he's come up and had a go at the egg. The gold's come off. Spartic stayed on. What a day's fishing we're having. After that instant success on the egg, we decided to put two on. Lloyd also switched over to the egg, and that's when the fun started to happen. We started to hit fish after fish. And the only thing I know is to love what I'm doing Never give up, never slow till I finally prove it Never listen to the no's, I just wanna keep moving Yeah, I put out all this art, it's my only medicine Yeah, everything I do, I'm just being genuine Yeah, I'm sick of being screwed, feel my own adrenaline Yeah, I do just what I do and so that's another cracking rainbow here The Williston Trout Fishery on that salmon egg Number six on the salmon egg Definitely working get him back. Okay, so one of the tips I can give you guys is when it comes to winter time, when the weather's cold like this, the water's very clear, so the fish tend to spook a lot easier. So one thing I'd say is to always keep on moving. So spend about 10 minutes to half an hour in each spot. Make your way around the lake. It gives you a good idea where the fish are and gives the fish time to readjust and relax and sort of calm down after being fished in that spot. Right guys, so I've decided to put on that Pulse Fire uh, Scruffy Cat and that Salmon Egg. They've both been catching well for me today. I'm on nine fish, I wanna get to 10. We've got about half hour now before it gets dark. So hopefully we can do it. Let's see if we can. So when I went in search for that 10th fish, I decided to go back to where the day began and Lloyd had his first fish. Now there was plenty of fish out in front of us. Now they weren't taking much, but I figured the combination of the salmon egg and a post fire cat would be irresistible. 
and it didn't take long before we were in to fish number 10. So as you can see there, lovely gold trout, host fire just on a lip there. Let's slip him back in. What a great day's fishing we're having at Williston. That's my 10th fish, that's my third species now, a nice little golden trout to add to the tally. And they've all been scrapping really well, we've really enjoyed. Um, I think it was quite a clever idea to put the two flies out catching on the same cast, because they've gone a bit quiet, but it's soon picked up as soon as I put that on. So as you can see, it's getting too dark now to fish. I've had a really good day. Lloyd caught a new PB. Uh, how did that feel, Lloyd? <laughs> That's amazing. Still can't get over it. Just excited, isn't it? <laughs> it was a lovely fish. To be fair, he had that on the reel for about 10 minutes and it spooled him. It must have been three or four times. It was a cracking fish. It was. It was brilliant. I enjoyed you coming back. Yeah, definitely visit back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so thanks, Willison, for letting us fish here. We hope you enjoyed the video and we hope we've given you a few tips that will help you catch some winter fish. Thanks, now.